Welcome to What's Working. I'm Kim Marston. This is the show that focuses on the workplace and the workforce trends going on around you. The goal is to simply hear these conversations that we bring to you so that you can learn a little something that'll make you a little bit better at what it is that you do. We focus on the workforce trends. What's going on out there? What does it take to find and hire and retain and keep good people? We focus on the marketplace trends. What's going on out in the marketplace? How do I sell more? What is changing in customer service? All that kind of stuff. That's the essence. That's the focus of this show. But not today. Today, it's a show that I'm going to focus on. I'm going to bear a grievance. And in that grievance, I'm going to get some answers into what the opportunities may be for me. And quite frankly, as I go into this conversation, I don't have a lot of hope. I don't have a lot of hope, but maybe I'll learn differently. Let's begin this way with a story. It was about four years ago that my wife and I decided to make some changes to our kitchen. We had saved money for years so that we did not have to go into debt in this uh, remodel process. We did anyway. Kitchens are expensive, more expensive than we thought. And in the process, we bought a number of new appliances. One of those appliances was a refrigerator. And we loved it when it came in. It worked fine. Big barn door type of thing. I don't know. There's probably a better term for it, but big barn door for it. It has a drawer in the bottom for the freezer. And in that drawer in the bottom is also the ice maker. The ice maker pumped out ice. Worked like a charm. We could hear it working all night long, and I was just so proud of the ice that was being made. And the warranty on that ice maker was for about a year. And then it was over, and on the other side of that warranty ended, the ice maker broke. And it has broken about five or six times since in the four years that we bought it. As I talk to you right now, it's broken. And I've had to call the appliance repair company again to ask them to come out here and see what can be done about this ice maker. It's a KitchenAid model. By telling you that, I'm not doing anything wrong. I know a little bit about libel and slander, and as long as I tell you the truth, I'm clean. But it's a KitchenAid model that has consistently failed us over and over and over again. So what is my recourse? What do I do? This thing worked like a top while it was in warranty, but somehow some magical wand was waved over it and it broke as soon as the warranty was over. And it's not uncommon for things like that to happen. You know the same thing. What is my recourse? A guy, I'm I'm just a little guy. I have no sway. I have no influence. And KitchenAid, which I think is owned by Whirlpool or something like that, is a big corporation. And they'll get a call from Cam Marston in Mobile, Alabama, complaining that he got duped on this refrigerator thing and it's not working the way they want. And I can just hear them belly laughing in their corporate offices somewhere about, ha ha, he wants us to consider this and Uh, It doesn't work the way he thought it would and hot belly laughing. Of course, this is my imagination running away with me. What do I do, man? What do I do? I had a shotgun one time and it malfunctioned in the I had shot it three times and put it on the plane with me and took it to Argentina. And the second shot in Argentina, it malfunctioned and it wouldn't work again. And I called them. I was so angry from that field in Argentina and said, hey, this gun that you guys showed me isn't working. And they belly laughed and they slapped their knee and not our fault and everything. And it wasn't until I went to social media with a video of the gun not working and me looking into the camera and saying, here's what's happened and here's where I am. And here was their response. And if you're in the market for a new shotgun, and I tagged them, of course, in these posts, I advise you to watch this video again and again before you make your buying decision. And it wasn't until I did that that my phone started ringing in that field in Argentina with the manufacturer saying we would be happy to reimburse you the full amount of that gun. So as soon as you get back, you send us that gun back and we will reimburse you. It wasn't until I had to shame them that I started getting some reaction to that. Is that what I have to do for this dang KitchenAid refrigerator that's chosen not to work again? As I say this, I, I, I again, like I said, as I, I as as the show is going on, it's broken again. What can I do about this? What recourse 
do people like you and me have? And like I said when I started this, I don't have a good feeling about what the answer may be. We're going to explore things like that on this show. We're going to talk specifically about what's not working. And right now, it's the dang ice maker in my refrigerator. When we come back from break, I'm going to have my buddy Knox Boatler on the line. He's an attorney. He deals with stuff like this, and he's going to tell me what my options are. Listen closely, folks. This is going to land in your lap sooner or later, too. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Is there recourse, or do we have to turn to social media shaming? You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. When we come back from break, Knox Boatler. A cool thing happened back in 64. That's when Keith Air Conditioning opened their doors. In my family, turn to the experts is more than a tagline. It's a promise. Every Keith technician is an experienced AC professional, and that saves you money. Speaking of money, how about 0% financing for up to 60 months on installations of new carrier systems? Keith and Carrier, turn to the experts. Mobile's leading name and comfort since 1964. License number 83731. The best, most cost-efficient ways to talk to customers about who you are and what you do is through signs, simple, effective signs. Hi, I'm Kim Marston, host of What's Working. Signorama is the Mobile Area's leader in helping you design and build signs advertising your business. What kinds? All kinds of signs. All kinds. Find Signorama on Facebook or at signorama-mobile.com. Think about how people really see you. The kid at the drive-thru just sees a coffee drinker. Please pull forward. Your local barista sees the person who loves a smiley face in their latte. See you next time. It's kind of the same way with insurance. Other insurance companies just see a customer, but a State Farm agent sees more. They see you as a neighbor. Your State Farm agent is here to get to know who you really are so they can help life go right. Call me, State Farm agent Allison Horner, and Mobile at 666-1616. We're back. You're listening to What's Working. On the line with me is Knox Boatler. Knox is going to teach us, you and me, what the little guy can do up against some of these big companies. And we've got a lot of ground to cover here. Knox, thank you for your time. Welcome to What's Working. No, sure. I sure appreciate it, Um, uh, Cam. um, This is uh, is an area I I like talking about. It's not the most exciting topics, um, but you would, as you can imagine, I feel a number of calls uh, daily um, from areas of, of lemon law, which would be um, auto uh, cases where there's some warranty issues. Uh, of course, now the hot topic is termites. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, interesting phone calls related to termites um, and what can be done. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's I'm gonna tell you, it's a mixed bag these days. Uh, consumer finance, you get a lot of phone calls related to that as well. Let's talk about all these things. You said it's not an interesting topic to me. It's a very interesting topic because the bile is in the back of my throat, based on my refrigerator. What I want to tell you about in a moment. But before we do that, <laughs> introduce yourself to the audience. You and I know each other as friends, but I want you to tell the listening audience who you are and what your background is. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'm a member of uh, Boltler Richardson Wolf. Uh, we are, my office is here, of course, in Mobile. We're at Dolphin and I-65. Um, my practice has been primarily plaintiff-oriented um, and uh, for the last 21 years. Um, and with that, there's been a, uh, I, do, I do quite a bit of injury work, but we also look at all sorts of insurance claims, um, uh, particularly, uh, you know, auto, of course, being in Mobile, Airport Boulevard. You're going to have a lot of property damage types of claims. People have questions. But um, unfortunately, uh, hot topics now are other types of insurance claims, which would be what was mentioned earlier, termites. And then, of course, we have these uh, hurricane claims that are now coming in. You know what? That is, that is a wonderful topic if we can get to it in this time, because gosh knows we've all had enough of the hurricanes. But let's go back to what's important the most right now, and that's my dang refrigerator. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's my show. It's my microphone. We're going to talk about my refrigerator to start, and then we're going to these other things. 
So I've got this KitchenAid Knox. I bought it, I want to say, four years ago. It ran like a top for a year. And then I think I'm on my at least fifth or sixth malfunction of the ice maker. And it seemed, you know, this is definitely what people would call a first world problem, that my ice maker isn't working the way I want it to. And I should be grateful that I have this and I have that. But dang it. I bought this thing for the ice maker to work and it keeps not working. Uh, I haven't called the manufacturer to begin to complain about it. It's out of warranty. Do I have any recourse in something like this? I've got all the bills uh, or, or the check stubs from where I've paid the appliance repair companies to come fix these things. Did, uh, do I just have to admit, hey, man, I got taken and the, and the lesson learned is to not buy this model anymore? In a nutshell, probably yes. Thank um, you. <laughs> there are a few things that I tell people to do first, um, and, and and one of them is actually submitting just a claim. I would say a claim, but at least notifying um, through. A, and it's it's very productive sometimes. The Consumer Product Safety Commission, uh, and it's 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 cpsc.gov, and you report these various issues you're having, and, and they do a good job. The the government does of of, of sending these issues uh, to the manufacturers, particularly the large manufacturers. Now, in reality, though, are they going to call you, Cam, and say, "Hey, we, we we've heard you've got all these problems. We're coming to fix it." Probably not. Um, and now, if you had bought it from a local dealer. Um, that, um, that you have some type of service agreement uh, that may be helpful in this situation for them to contact the manufacturer and say, look, you've got to do something here. You've got to give this guy a discount or voucher um, uh, helping on uh, the, the purchase of a new Frigidaire. Um, and that, in reality, is, is a lot of times what will happen. Um, but you've, you, if, you, if you bought this from a, not a Lowe's or a Home Depot, but you bought it from a a a a, 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 a company that, that that does a lot, a lot of local um, is a local dealer for more of a high end refrigerator. And Cam, I know you you probably have one of these. Um, <laughs> you've got to start worrying about the the terms and conditions that are on the back of that invoice, and that's getting everybody these days. And when you're clicking on all these internet sites purchasing things, there are terms and conditions with everything. And my concern would be if you did within the six years, it's a contractual issue. You said, hey, I'm making a claim against you, Frigidaire, because of what you sold me here. Um, you sold me a, a bad uh, freezer, ice maker. Um, well, then they may come in and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You look at the, look at the terms and conditions you signed at that dealership or, 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 our, or our dealer, our local dealer. There's an arbitration clause in there. You can't sue us. You have to go to arbitration. So I undoubtedly signed this thing and undoubtedly whatever I signed was in size six font, right? You'd need a, a extraordinary pair of eyeglasses to read it. It was written in a language that's incomprehensible to a guy like me. I don't know how to interpret this type of thing. Uh, and, and I don't know anybody that reads these things, except perhaps someone like you, the attorney that knows what they're about to get into. I also have to think that if I didn't sign it, they wouldn't sell it to me. That in order to get one of these refrigerators, with the exception of a Lowe's, a Home Depot, where you can just buy it and take it with you, uh, I can't buy one of these things unless I sign one of these documents. Is that the case? I'm kind of over the barrel. If I want this model, I've got to agree to these terms, and these terms in no way benefit me. Am I right there or am I being over the top? You're absolutely right, and that has been the consideration of the courts. It's a losing argument at this point, um, but the thought being, and look, I don't read these documents any any more than you do these days because if I want the product, this I've got to click here or I've right. got to sign here. Um, and our courts have really looked at this and said, wait a second, how is the consumer in a, in a negotiating situation to where they can they they look at they're, 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 is it, how's a bargain here? How, how can they bargain back and forth contractually and say, oh, well, I'll, I'll give you this if you sign the arbitration clause when we know that doesn't exist. And, and, and for now, the courts have, have tended um, throughout the country to look towards the manufacturers, the dealers and said, hey, it is what it is. You got, if y'all want to buy their product, you got to sign here. Am I wrong to think, and this is the conspiracy theorists in me, this is the cynic in me, am I wrong to think that these companies have a, uh, a solid one-year warranty, let's say, 
But as they develop the product, they say, all right, we need to put this piece into this refrigerator. And if we wanted this refrigerator to last 10 solid years, we would use a steel piece. But a steel piece costs a lot of money compared to the equivalent thin plastic piece. The plastic piece will last a year. It'll last within the warranty. We'll make the refrigerator cheaper that way. We can build bigger margins on it that way, uh, help our shareholders or whatever it may be that way. So let's make a dandy of a refrigerator that will last a year. And then after that, it's uh, we're clean because they clicked here. They signed the document. So this is the this is the guy in me that I don't like. This is the personality of mine that's coming out of some sort of uh, intentional ill will. What do you think? Well, you're exactly right. And there is some of that, particularly in, in Alabama. Um, you know, there are not many consumer protection laws in Alabama where we do get the benefit of some of the consumer protection laws is from other larger states. Um, say, for instance, California. They, of course, have some incredible consumer protection laws. But we sometimes do. It's a trickle-down effect. We do get some of the benefit of that. So I'm with you. I've had an issue with my car recently. It was just it just amazingly. The air condition went out. The condenser went out 1,000 miles above the, the $50,000 or 50,000-mile warranty. Um, and next thing I know, I'm spending – a thousand dollars to have it repaired. I was not very happy. I was like, "How did this happen?" Amazing. A thousand miles after the fifty thousand warranty, my air condition suddenly doesn't work. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, there are there are states that have um, a large or uh, have 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 greater laws to protect the consumer, and manufacturers are weary of those states. Yeah. And for that reason, we do get some of the benefit there on certain recalls. So how do I, is it the manu, is it the location that the item was purchased? For example, I purchased the refrigerator in Alabama, or is it the state where it was manufactured that controls the laws of these products? Ooh, wow, you are going into another great battle here, one that you and I didn't even talk about before all this. Um, in fact, the U.S. Supreme Court just talked about this issue again uh, two weeks ago, um, and Clarence Thomas Interesting, he very rarely speaks up in Washington when he's hearing these cases, but uh, 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 Justice Thomas really questioned the Ford uh, uh, lawyer and then and said, I don't like your argument, but then on the, on the, on the other side, looking at the, the, the victim in this particular case, looked at the victim's lawyer and said, I don't agree with you either. And so everybody's <laughs> shrugging their shoulders. And what I'm talking about here is this. In the case that was heard by the Supreme Court, it was a, a, a person who had a horrible wreck. There was a, a catastrophic injury in that Ford vehicle. Um, the, the person occupying that Ford vehicle had bought it used. It bought it, I can't remember exactly which state, let's say it was Alabama. Um, however, Ford had built that vehicle and shipped it to Georgia. And again, I'm not exactly, I can't remember the exact facts, but it was in another state. Yeah. Um, and so the question was, well, the accident happened in Alabama. He bought it from a used car dealer in Alabama, and he's suing the theory being some type of crashworthiness defect. In other words, the vehicle should have held up better in the accident. And because it didn't, it resulted in some type of catastrophic loss. Well, Ford is saying, well, we don't have any ties or personal jurisdiction to Alabama. We built that car and sold and gave it to a dealer in Georgia to sell. So how are we bound to Alabama? And, um, and there's a lot... Right now, there's there that that that's up in the air. That's a very gray area. Yeah. Um. And uh. And 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 the internet has complicated things here. You know, you're buying things on Amazon. You know, this package is being shipped to Alabama. Hey, should I? Can I sue you in Alabama? Right. Or do I sue you where manufactured? It's typically what the manufacturers are trying to do is, and the drug manufacturers have have done this with with some success is they want you to sue them in their backyard. Yeah. Um, Ford had much rather have the lawsuit filed in Michigan uh, than in Alabama. Right. Um, There's more likewise, sympathetic to them are, there. That's right. And and same with your drug manufacturers. Uh, most of them are based in New Jersey. they much rather have you file up in New Jersey. So it's, it's, it's really interesting. we got to take a break here, Knox. Let's come back after the break. I want to talk to you about, this, this is something I mentioned in the opening comments before I had you on the line, uh, shaming, shaming these companies and where the line is on what, if, if that's a good idea or not. Well, you're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. I got Knox Boltler on the line with me. He's telling me essentially 
Cam, uh, you're in a nasty creek in a leaky canoe with one broken paddle when it comes to my uh, refrigerator. We'll be right back. I'm Matt Armbruster with Ransom Ministries. We help people in our community that most others have given up on. Please donate your unwanted electronics to Ransom Recycling. We teach life skills, job readiness, and job creation through our electronic recycling program. We take anything with a cord. Find us at RansomMinistries.com or you can call us at 251-751-0044. Human Resource Department spend countless hours on insurance billing mistakes, Obamacare rules, and compliance. Employee benefits serve the purpose of recruiting, retaining, and rewarding employees. We can handle all of your benefit needs with cost-effective products, employee enrollments, and handle your HR issues. Benefit admin doesn't have to be complicated. My name is Michael Cowart Jr. of the Cowart Group, and we specialize in helping businesses with their employee benefit packages. Visit CowartAssociates.com. Knox Boatler is an attorney who's given me bad news about the state of my refrigerator, which hasn't worked well since the warranty ran out. Mysteriously, the refrigerator faltered about the time the warranty ran out. Knox, in the opening comments, I told a story of getting a new shotgun. It malfunctioned. I mean, it was not dangerous. It just wouldn't eject the shell. It jammed over and over and over again. It was a brand new. I'd shot it three times before it started uh, malfunctioning. The manufacturer didn't want anything to do with it, wouldn't, you know, sorry, it's it's not us, it's you, all kinds of stuff. And I went to social media with a video of me shooting the gun, having it malfunction, and then looking into the camera and saying, here's the model of the gun, here's the manufacturer, here's the shell that I'm using. You'll notice that there's nothing unusual about the shell, and the thing won't work. Be very careful when you buy this model of gun, because it's really not, it's not working for me. My language was a little bit different in the video, I'll say. But it wasn't until I went to social media that suddenly my phone in the dove field in Argentina started ringing from the manufacturer saying, we will be happy to reimburse you the, the, the amount for that gun if you send it back to us. But I had to take what I thought was an extraordinary step in order to do that. What is your advice on that? Do I do I risk liable or slander or anything like that by going to social media about the defaults of these products? Well, the one thing about slander, truth is the greatest defense. And that's the advice I'm giving a lot of people in your situation is, hey, go to social media. You know, these the these marketing departments are constantly watching this these days. And a YouTube video um, is very effective. Um, just, you know, it may be as effective as what I mentioned earlier with the Consumer Product Safety Commission on various products or NHTSA, which um, deals with all types of auto defects, uh, sending reports to the federal government. You know, if you just say, hey, I'm not happy here on Facebook or YouTube or other, some, some type of other social media device, ooh, that gets everybody's attention. So, yes, I have it, – it's, it's not a – it's not something that I can aggressively, you know, cite law and say – Hey, this is this is what you need to do, but it, it is just as effective, if not maybe more these days. So it's and but the thing you mentioned that I need I want to emphasize, it's gotta be the cold, bone chilling truth. No elaboration, no I mean no no emotion in this thing. Here's what's happening and here's evidence that it's happening. That's what you suggest, huh? That's that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um you know, Better Business Bureau has always been effective with that when there have been local complaints um with, you know, your various service providers, uh being roofers, contractors. Um uh but when it comes to products, um social media um is probably I would tell you as effective, um, if not more effective than trying to report to some some one of these uh the, the, these governmental uh, watchdogs. Did you ever think when you and I first looked at Facebook or whatever it was years back, that this would become a consumer protection device of uh, of social media. That is kind of one of the, I guess it's one of the blessings of this same so of social media is that suddenly my voice can be amplified by the number of l clicks and likes and forwards and things like that. It's truly not one of the outcomes that I would have predicted on social media. 
Oh, absolutely. And, and of course, with Amazon, too, you know, you before you purchase um, a product that you don't know much about, what do you do? You look at the one Amazon recommended or you go straight to the reviews and try to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go into uh, termites. We had to dismiss our termite company not long ago because they came over here to the house and wanted to begin doing termite protection. That was extraordinary, in my opinion. Every time they came, they, they came to the house and said, here's what we want to do. And we said, whoa, that's drastic. That's dramatic. I'm not sure that's for the benefit of the house. In fact, I think it may drilling holes in the foundation. It was every 18 inches, then every 12, and then every six inches. Every time they came back, the amount of what I'm, the term I'm using, destruction on the house in order to protect the house was elevated a bit more. And the final time was we have to drill holes in all the walls where there is plumbing in order to, uh, to access that plumbing. And we will put a plastic panel over the hole. This is, <laughs> this is, this is dramatic. And we said, I, I, I'm willing to risk this uh, versus what you're prescribing here is the solution. Goodness knows this termite situation is something you're familiar with. What in the heck's going on with this stuff? Well, and I think what you may be getting caught up in here is they may have done a review of your home and realized, hey, maybe we haven't been doing what we were supposed to do for the last several years. And so... In a lot of situations like this, where maybe you've either had previous termite damage or all of a sudden there's just been an incredible amount of treatment that you weren't seeing in years past, you know, one kind of unknown that, 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 people, um, that, that people don't know about the state is the State Department of Agriculture actually oversees termites and the termite industry. And it may be worth you at this point, though you've gotten rid of the company, to go ahead and file a, a complaint and the state will have a representative, an inspector will pull that file, your file from uh, that, that termite service and will give you a report and show you exactly, hey, it doesn't look like they've treated from the, these few years here. And I think it's important at this point for anybody who's having some issues um, or is in a an area that, that, that it's termite heavy, and I'm talking most of Mobile at this point, to at least reach out to the state and request that report. Now, they are overwhelmed, as you can imagine at this point. Um, I had to, I made a request for a family member recently, but it does give you, you know, you're not at this point you know, uh, fighting with the termite company. You just want to see a report at this point. Hey, I want to see what you've been doing the last several years. I've been paying a premium here, and I'd like to know what you've been doing in, in, in you know, in response to that. Yeah. So I'm not, I know I'm not the only one I've heard from people that you and I know, or that are around town that are struggling with this as well. And I've seen some of the damage that it's done in this quote unquote home treatment. And perhaps it's the world's greatest treatment that a, that a termite can't possibly thrive in the environment that they want to create around my house. But the cost, and I'm not talking about the monetary cost, but the aesthetic cost, and even the foundational cost of the house of, 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 of this destruction of so much drilling and holes can't be good. It's got to be, in my opinion, a net negative to the whole process. And you're seeing holes everywhere. They are, I had a good friend who came in the office the other day and said, Terminex just showed up my house and started drilling the other day. (laughs) And uh, they're doing it everywhere. And, um, and it is a response to some of the arbitration they've been going um, through Um, the background, of course, arbitration, it's always in everybody's agreements. Um, and uh, it, it give, gives up your right to trial by jury. And the thought is each party is responsible for, so, for selecting and paying an arbitrator. Um, and if they, of course, cannot agree on an arbitrator, a court will select one for them. Um, and there, frankly, there just aren't many rules like there are in court, rules of procedure where you're allowed to ask for documents and information and they respond to it. It's it's kind of up to what the arbitrator decides. And so what you were finding for years is that the arbitrator was finding for the termite company. Well, it has gotten so bad um, and really through a lot of the state documents that some of these companies are not doing what they've said they were, they've been doing for years and taking a premium for it, that the arbitrators are actually um, awarding and in some cases a substantial amount to the homeowner. And, um, it's, uh, at this point, it has definitely gotten, um, several companies attention, which is why you're seeing all this now. Yeah. Let's walk down this road of arbitration. Let's go back to my refrigerator and say that the refrigerator is, you know, I, I, I've had enough and, and let's just assume that I've got just 
pockets full of money that I can pursue this and all the time in the world to pursue this. And it's likely going to cost me more than a new refrigerator, but I've got the bit in my teeth and I'm going to pursue this. And the, and we, and I stake a claim or whatever the terminology may be. I don't, I don't think it's stake a claim, but whatever the terminology may be. And it comes to arbitration. Walk me down that path. What can one of what can I or any of the listeners expect if we choose arbitration? You told us you get to pick or agree upon the arbitrator. How does it work? Is it is it efficient? Is it quick? Or is it as cumbersome as perhaps a court case could be? No, the, the one benefit of it is that it is more efficient. Um, and the thought being that the arbitrator, and it could be sometimes it's a panel of three, depending on the, the amount of the damage claimed. Um, so in most your consumer uh, cases, say the fr- frigid air arbitration, if you decide to go that route, um, would be, and we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, it would, you would select, the, the, the parties would agree on one arbitrator, they he or she would hear the evidence on both sides and make a decision. And it what arbitration was originally created for were corporations having disputes against one another. The thought being, hey, why don't we just amicably sit down and try to work this out? And if we can't, we've got an arbitrator and we move on. Um, well, as the laws continued and continued and continued, you start seeing more and more arbitration clauses towards the consumer. Um, and so that pendulum may have swung um, as far as it can on arbitration, and maybe I see maybe kind of swinging back a little bit. Um, The thought was in putting arbitration clauses into documents, contracts, was that to avoid some of these outrageous um, verdicts that were coming down. Um, You know, the one in Alabama was uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s, BMW v. Gore, which um, uh, someone purchased a new... BMW, paint was scratched at the dealership, they patched it up, they didn't tell that person, and millions of dollars were awarded um, to the, the purchaser because it wasn't disclosed uh, that, that there was a paint chip, um, and they had to actually repaint some of the vehicle. So arbitration was brought in to try to, to tone that down, so to speak. Yeah. Well, now, maybe it's gone too far. Now the consumers have absolutely no right. Yeah. Um, so your Frigidaire, for example, you know, arbitration – conservatively cost, you're paying the arbitrator and the party share the cost and expense of arbitration. So you're looking at, I would say probably $5,000 on your side, 5,000 for the, so you're looking around $10,000 total, yeah. the arbitrator. And then you're talking about an ice maker. It, 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 and then you've still got to prove you've got to have an engineer come in and say, Hey, they should have done this. This is why this ice maker doesn't work. A single consumer can't do this. Yeah. They can't handle this. It's, it's too expensive. Um, and so for those people that have an arbitration clause, you really, what we talked about earlier, you almost have to rely upon those states that have greater consumer protection laws and disallow arbitration clause in certain um, in situations, which would be the refrigerator. Yeah. You know, that contract maybe say, you know, in, 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 in some of my – I hate to say blue states, but we're getting to, we're in election week. Um, the, the consumer rights and benefit laws may help you out here. Yeah. Um, but we do get a trickle down in Alabama. Understand that. When we come back from break, let's talk about indemnifying. Let's talk a little bit more about arbitration, perhaps. Let's let's talk about these things that both restrict and anything that you can come up with that enhances the end user that enhances the the rights of the consumer or the end user. And I, you know what? I don't even like the way I sound when I say that, but gosh, that's the way it feels. So let's, let's come back. And it sounds like from what we've talked about thus far, Knox, the only thing I got on my side is a Twitter account, a dang Twitter account or a dang social media account. I'd be curious of your thoughts on that. Let's go to break. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. Got Knox Boatler on the line with me. We'll be right back. This is Cam Marston, host of What's Working. Jim Mitchell and his team at Signorama have provided all types of signage for nearly every event I've been a part of for years. I know his team's creativity, their multitude of products, and how easy they are to work with. His no mistake, Signorama is South Alabama's marketplace leader. Find Signorama on Facebook. 
call 6340100 or visit next to Mullinex Ford on Airport Boulevard. Think about your home. What do you see? Do you just see two stories or the stories of your toddler's first steps? <laughs> now think about your car. Do you see an odometer reading or your kids reading in the back seat? Other insurance companies just see a house. They just see a car. But a State Farm agent sees what your home and your car really mean to you. So why not give them the protection they deserve? You can reach me, State Farm agent Allison Horner, at allisonhorner.com. We're back. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. On the line with me, Knox Boatler of the law firm Boatler Richardson Wolf here in Mobile. Knox, you and I were talking a little bit about uh, before the break. What what advantages does the consumer have? Is there any advantage? Now, somebody, I guess an economist will say, yeah, Cam, your advantage is your dollars, where you choose to buy things. That's where uh, that's your advantage. And if, if enough people stop buying that brand of refrigerator, they'll fix it. They'll make it better. But I don't think that's the case. Go ahead. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. It, um, it, 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 that's the, that case can be very difficult. Um, and that takes a long time for a lot of traction. Um, and you know, just like any consumer, you want something done now, dang it. You know, it's not working right and I want it fixed. Um, what you will see, though, in a lot of these type of situations is when there are enough consumers, and this is where I was going with the, with, with trickling down to Alabama, yeah. when you have enough consumers that say, dang it, this is not right, they will be grouped together ultimately. And you will see various states that do have consumer laws trying to seek some type of class action. Um, and we do get the benefit of that sometimes. You know, There have been recalls or extended warranties um, based upon um, the laws of other states, and they, you know, they finally say, "Hey, you know, there've been enough consumers that have grouped together. They have a theory as to why there's a defect here, and, and that's important to point out too. Um, the consumer in these situations carries the burden of proof. You've got to say, "Hey, this didn't work right," um, and you've got to, in some way, explain why it didn't work right. And of course, what I mentioned by that is it th- things out of warranty. Um, there's a different set of laws for those things that that fall within a warranty. But you're ultimately getting people together in big numbers and saying, hey, this isn't right. And a lot of times consumers in Alabama have the benefit of those of those lawsuits that are filed in other states. So you're suggesting that any one of uh, the products or the items that I have that really fails in a major way, in my opinion, and I can point to it and say warranty and Here's what it was promised to do and it didn't do. That we not keep our mouths shut, that we do something about it, that we make a call to the cpsc.gov or, or whatever it may be and say, hey, this is what's going on here. You guys need to know. Rather than shaking our head and licking our wounds and saying, man, maybe I'm going to find me an honest appliance company out there somewhere. No, that's exactly right. You've, you've got to report it. Um, at this point, you do. And hey, it's just like the RBO, you know, we don't stay at a condo at the beach unless we look at the reviews first. If there's a bad review, hmm, they click on the next uh, condo that's available. Yeah, yeah. So there are some terms I'm familiar with, Knox, that are that are part of your lexicon. Tell us what uh, preemption and indemnity mean and how they matter to me. So uh, they're, 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 they are two separate legal terminologies, and both of which people, it's mind numbing to talk about, um, but they are both, I'm seeing them come through my practice um, daily, whereas 20 years ago, I, I didn't hear these terms. Um, let's start with preemption first, because there's a lot of advertisement on um, on the radio and on TV these days for various prescription drugs. And so that may be a, the best scenario to put it in. Um, it's pretty timely. So the thought being with, in a, from, from, and I'm going to talk very broad, um, preemption, the argument is with manufacturers is, hey, if we are complying with federal law and we make our product based upon federal law, um, well, we shouldn't be sued if there's some type of defect related to that. Um, and where you see that, too, is with some, for instance, the FDA. The FDA approves a drug, says it's safe to use for a consumer, and then as that drug progresses 
for 20 years um, and ultimately becomes a generic uh, drug. And then they find, well, wait, there are problems with this particular medication. What is the consumer's right to recover if they suffer some type of injury? Um, and that is a battle, the thought being at this point where the law stands right now with generic manufacturers is that they are preempted, um, that, uh, that, that federal law has basically told them and regulated what they can and cannot do, including the black box warning, which you'll find on pill boxes. And so your, your generic manufacturer, regardless if they knew, hey, we've done some studies and this doesn't look good, um, the, the argument, and it's been a successful argument so far, is preemption. Hey, the FDA told us this way we've got to do it. We're doing it. And they're, we're not responsible to make any changes. So uh, essentially the drug company is saying, we developed this drug with the FDA's approval. We did every, we jumped through every hoop that they said we had to jump through. We've submitted the drug to the public. It has worked to the degree that we suggested that it would work. But after it's become generic, we, there has been discovered some things that were not discovered during the drug trial. And people want to sue us, the manufacturer, for that, yet we did everything we were told to do. Is that correct? That's correct. And look, and what you've done there, you've done a very good job of explaining the original manufacturer's now response. That's yeah. their argument these days. Yeah. And, and that's, that has not been determined within the courts yet. There's oh, really? been a lot of fighting on this. Yeah. But the generic manufacturers, those where you say like a, a popular drug right now that you're seeing on TV is Zantac. Um, there's a lot of scratching the heads with some lawyers saying, well, wait a second. These generic manufacturers, most people are going to buy generic at yeah. some point. They're going to buy the, the more expensive original Zantac. Uh, we're, what, what are we doing with these? I mean, they, these, these, these drugs may have had some type of cancer-causing ingredient in them. And you're, you're telling me the generic manufacturers may be preempted here because they were following federal law? So there's a little bit of a distinction there. I think your summary was, was fantastic for the original manufacturer. Right now, the law is on the um, – on 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 the other manufacturers um, is hey uh, we're 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 hiding under preemption and and the way to get around that on the generic manufacturers in most cases is to find some type of manufacturing defect and uh, that, that becomes very tricky very yeah. tricky all right next one indemnity yeah so this is a little bit farther away from the consumer although just like arbitration it seems like arbitration was just a business contractual arrangements, and then all of a sudden it hit into the consumer world. Where we're seeing indemnity is now falling. It is in small business contracts. And, you know, let's take a scenario where a small business rents a piece of equipment. Um, that piece of equipment uh, malfunctions. Their employer, their employee, excuse me, uh, gets injured. Um, on that um, on that product, um, the worker, in addition to filing some type of worker's comp claim, um, also files a claim against the rental company saying, hey, this thing was defective. Y'all rented it to us in a defective way and I've suffered an injury. Well, these rental companies now have what are called um, indemnity clauses in. And it basically says, hey, if we're sued, employer, we're going to recover from you because you agreed to hold us harmless in a lot of situations here. Um, or, or you may have been responsible for some type of negligence. And if you're in any way negligent for this as well, in other words, some type of, 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 of uh, early morning service inspection um, that, that they, are, they, they, they try to put in there to require an employer to do um, in, in, some, in a lot of these rental companies. The rental company, we want our money back from you, employer. Anything we pay out to this, to this employee, we want back from you, employer. I hope that makes sense. It's very confusing. <laughs> it is confusing. And it sounds like um, whereas I may be the end user, uh, I am still responsible in some way for the accident that happened or, or, or something like that. It's not it's not clean and easy. It's a it's a machination of words that gets me uh, the, that gets the renter or the manufacturer uh, escape. That's the word I want to say. Is that am I understanding that correctly? No, you're right. And lawyers that are paid by the word absolutely love these types of clauses <laughs> and contracts. Yeah. Um, uh, and, 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 but it, it's one of these things where you're scratching your head saying, wait a second, 
you're the responsible party, but now because there's a contractual arrangement, you, you, whatever you pay out to me, you're going to go collect from the guy who signed the contract. Like I had this, you know, in most cases, the victim's kind of like, okay, why does this really matter to me? But it, it what it does is it may take a case that, uh, you know, a civil case that's in court and filed. It may take something that, hey, we can sit down and get a, uh, a we can seek a compromise here, right? And they're like, well, we've got to talk to the person who's actually going to reimburse us about all this first. And it makes it, 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 it prolongs litigation. Um, something that, um, um, you know, the, the people that created these types of contracts love. Yeah, so. yeah. It, it sounds like it prolongs it, which means makes it more expensive, which makes it more difficult for the quote unquote normal guy to pursue. Right. That's exactly right. That's, yeah. That is exactly right. Exactly. Knox, as we're coming to a close, um, we've looked at all kinds of different stuffs in, in this this short conversation that I know we could go on longer and longer. What is your opinion, man? What is your opinion? Knox Boltler, not the attorney, not the uh, guy that knows how to write indemnity clauses or read them of, you know, I, it's just such a broad question, but what's your opinion of what things are going on there? Are you out there? Are you are you proud of the manufacturers well, and stuff? Are you kind of disgusted by this? And that's what motivates you every day. What do you think? It's a pendulum. And, and that's unfortunately, we have to look at it this way. And it gets frustrating. Uh, the pendulum is, has swung, in my opinion, as far as it probably can when it comes to manufacturers and a lot of big business. Uh, but you look at the other side of that pendulum and in the early 90s, it was outrageous. Um, you know, consumers were benefiting from agreements that were poorly written um, or just uh, scenarios that didn't apply um, in these contracts. Consumers were, 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 were really, truly, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was too much. And what you see now, it, 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 I would love for it to be right there in the middle, but it just didn't because there's just things that play out both ways. Mm -hmm. And so right now, you as a consumer, it's tilted against you. But um, as more and more people have issues that come up, um, you're going to see it actually maybe swing the other way. Yeah. And if we could just keep it in the middle, it would be great for everyone. Do you think, let's get politics in here real quick, because we're already over on time. I need to bring this close. Will the election, and now as you and I are talking, the election is tomorrow. This won't broadcast till the week after. But is, is, this, is this a political conversation? You know, I don't want it to be, but I think it is because there, 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 there are pros and cons on both sides. Yes, we need stronger um, consumer laws, but with that, are we affecting employment? Are we affecting the cost of these products? I mean, there's so many things, so many variables you have to consider here. Um, yes, yeah, so we're trying to make it political. Um, but, you know, cost of goods, uh, manufacturing process, jobs. Um, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just, that's why I'm always like, can we just get this pendulum to whatever, what I think is fair, but Hey, nobody's listening to me. <laughs> they are right now, my friend. They are right now. <laughs> Knox Boatler with Boatler Richardson and Wolf. His last name is spelled B O T E L E R Knox. Thank you so much. I, uh, I'm going to get my fingers ready and start talking about my refrigerator online. And I'll, folks, I'll update you on what happens. Let's see where this goes. Knox, I appreciate it, my friend. Anytime. Thank you. We'll be back after this break with final comments. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Kim Marston. <laughs> Do you sometimes wonder about different money topics, but struggle to find the answers? The Every Dollar Counts podcast with Gulf Coast experts Josh Knoll and Jay Stubbs is made for those folks serious about their financial plan and looking for answers. Josh and Jay dedicate their time to explaining the various services and products available, as well as discussing lifestyle and money interests of the modern day family. Tune in to Every Dollar Counts on Apple Podcasts and everywhere else you get your favorite podcasts. Hi, I'm Cam Marston, host of What's Working. My carrier Infinity system is quiet, energy efficient, and runs like a dream. 
To keep it running smoothly, I rely on a maintenance plan from Keith Air Conditioning. With a Keith maintenance plan, your home or business receives discounts and 24-7 priority service. Give Keith Air Conditioning a call today at 251-476-3610 or visit keithair.com. Keith and Carrier, turn to the experts. I don't like thinking negatively about people and things and corporations and products. I don't like thinking that these products were developed uh, with the intention of failing right around the time of the warranty. I don't like thinking that there are people running these organizations that have that in mind. My preference is to think that they're in there doing the right thing, creating a, the, the best product they're capable of doing. And at some point, if they're, if they're brought to task on it, if it's not holding up, they'll do the right thing. And goodness knows I live in this beautiful, blissful little world. And I realize on a regular basis that maybe I'm wrong. One of the things that this show has taught me, though, is that there are people and companies out there eager to do the right thing. The smaller the company, the more access you and I have to the people that make the decisions of this organization, the more they seem to be willing and eager to do the right thing. Once they get multi-tiered and multi-layered, and there's no way for you and me to reach the product people, you and me to reach the president, you and me to reach the decision makers, it seems that all this muck gets in the way. So, for example, I can tell you one of my favorite people on planet Earth is this guy, Marquise Forge, who works with 1186 Water. And when we interviewed him, it became very clear he was in the business to do the right thing. A godly man, a smart man, a, uh, a man that's, that's really here to help. That's the impression that I get. But it was him that I spoke to, and, and, and we have access to him. I have no doubt any one of us could pick up the phone and get him on the phone. It might take a little while for him to get in touch, but he's going to call you. Similar with other businesses around town and, and that we've interviewed on this show. They're there to do the right thing. But then you run into something like I ran into the, with the refrigerator. And you just think, gosh, it makes me sick. It, it really, really frustrates me that there are, they're shielded in this. And I would be naive to think that it doesn't exist, but it does. And I wish I'd say I'm immune to it, that it rolls like water off a duck's back. It doesn't. It bothers the heck out of me. And it makes me do this. And I hope this is the takeaway for you as well. I have a business. It's a seminar business that I go to the public with and I try to sell and do the right thing. Is there ever a case that I can make that I'm not trying hard enough to do the right thing for my customers, to give my clients the best content that I'm capable of doing? It's a it's a it's a self-examination and a self-evaluation. I can't control what KitchenAid does about my refrigerator anymore. I can try to shame them and I'll keep up with, I'll let you know how this goes via social media, but I can't control it. Uh, I can though control me and my reactions and who I do business with and who I choose to promote out there. All right. That's enough. Special thanks to Knox Boltler. We'll have another show for you next week. Have a good week, everybody. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Kim Marston.